Okay, we're actually going to start in SAP and we're going to take a look at some general ledger detail and you know go through the process of clearing this automatically and explain how Blackline uh, automates that process. What we're looking at right now, and this could be any type of account that's open item managed, but this particular example is other receivables. So something outside of trade receivables, things like rent or um, tax refunds or insurance settlement receivables. So things that we're often maybe booking a receivable for and then perhaps receiving multiple payments uh, months later. Um, and at some point in time, you know, those transactions zero out. At some point in time, we, we receive that whole amount. Um, and those items can be cleared. It's just it's tough to be able to know when to do that and to know which transactions should be cleared against each other. So you can see that in my particular uh, GL account, in my detail, I've got hundreds uh, of open items. And the whole point of open item management is to be able to provide clarity and to be able to have a view where you can just see the relevant items, the things that should be open. But right now, because you know, this might be a manual process, we might not have a good way to do that. So we might be left with a bunch of open items in the account um, such as this. So let's let's show how um, Blackline would, um, would work with this process. So I'm going to flip over to Blackline and I'm going to jump right into the reconciliation for that particular account in SAP. So the first thing that you'll notice is Blackline you know, through the connector is bringing in the general ledger balance on, on a scheduled basis. And that general ledger balance is hard coded into the application. I myself as a user can't change that. So I have to reconcile to what that GL balance is. Now, what's also happening is we're bringing in those open items uh, into Blackline and we're actually creating some, some rules to match those. You can see at the top, we actually have some data that's telling us um, how many transactions have been matched, um, how many uh, are unmatched, and that's all being processed through our matching engine. So I'll actually drill down into that and, and give you an example of some of the rules that might be set up in order to match transactions. So I'm actually in the rules. Um, those transactions are being brought in. Let's take a look at what some of those rules might be. So on my screen you can see I have some fields from SAP, things like text, the assignment field, date, uh, amount and document currency, amount and local currency. All the fields that I've brought in from SAP are available for matching and I can choose any of those fields to match against each other. So in this particular case I've set up a rule that's going to look at the line item text and it's going to look at the debit and the credit side and it's going to compare the text in the line item. It's also going to compare the value that's in the assignment field. Uh, also, it's going to compare the amount. So in this case, I've got three criteria um, to do the matching and I'm matching on the text, the assignment field and the amount. All three of those things have to happen exactly in order for there to be a match. And this is going to generate one-to-one -one matches. So this is a very simple rule. The rules can get much more sophisticated and complex as the data becomes more complex. So an example might be where we want to match on things like assignment field and we want to match on you know the amount in document currency as well but we know that there's many to many or many to one relationships in here so we want to subtotal on a field or group on a particular field and that's what we see above so we can tell the application tell the matching engine where it should do those groupings we want to add up all the debits with a particular value in the assignment field and compare them to a group of transactions um, on the other side with the same assignment field. In addition to many to many and many to one matching, we can also implement thresholds. You'll notice in this case, we're just matching on assignment field and the amount in document currency, but we've actually put in a threshold of a dollar. So we can actually go pick up matches, even if they don't match to the penny, 
we can have the system identify things that look like a match um, within a certain tolerance and that could be on amount like it is in this case or it could be um, on the date as well and in this case I've actually set my rule up because I'm using a threshold I've set it up to be suggested so it's not going to automatically match it or automatically clear it in SAP it's actually going to identify it and basically prompt me to decide what we should do with that now that matching engine uh, can be run on a schedule whenever we're bringing that data in and hopefully it's going to generate a, a lot of matches and, and what you might see is you know you might have a, a lot of many to one matches in this particular case I had a hundred and fifty thousand dollar insurance settlement um, which I booked a receivable for and I collected three different payments over the course of three months well the system recognized when that third payment came in and when the whole balance due was received and was able to match those items based on things that were contained in the assignment field or the text field that would normally be something that might be difficult to track manually uh, in Excel so let's jump back into the reconciliation we took a look at some of the rules that are available and it can get much more complex and robust from there um, we took a look at some of the transactions that were matched um, as a result but let's start talking about um, you know things that might be unmatched in, in our reconciliation in Blackline it's very easy um, to get to the items that are unmatched so if we take a look at that list we're gonna see a list of debits and credits that are currently unmatched now if you remember when we were looking in SAP there was clearly hundreds of open items in the account but what the matching engine is telling us right now is that you know based on the rules that we set there's not hundreds of items that should be open in SAP there's only two items that are unmatched and those items are actually current period items so what the matching engine is saying is that there's been a lot of in in and outs in that account but there's a lot of things that could be matched off now these are unmatched and that's that's fine that's legitimate these are items that are new um, these are receivables we've just recorded and we haven't received a payment for and these belong on our reconciliation um, black line it's it has integrated products matching is integrated with reconciliation so it's very easy um, to take items that are unmatched after the matching process and create items on the reconciliation so what we've done is we've brought in the data into black line and run a matching process and we've essentially automatically reconciled this account we've identified the uh, the two items that are current and belong in our reconciliation and you can see that we're actually down to a 90 cent difference and the reason that we have a 90 cent difference is because we actually have a suggested match where we found uh, a couple items that appear to be a match but the amounts are off by 90 cents so this was picked up in that rule that we created with the threshold and at this point as a user I could determine what to do with this I could put this on my reconciliation um, or I could match these off and uh, and clear them against each other so now this is great a lot of companies use our matching and our reconciliation product to be able to automate these processes and one thing that um, a number of customers have wanted for a long time is now the ability now that we've done this matching process to be able to replicate that in SAP right? to be able to clear those items we want to sync up black line and SAP we want to show an SAP that there's only um, a couple open items not hundreds and that is now very easy to do the way that that works in black line we will have uh, an interface that's going to take all those transactions that have been matched uh, and it's going to send a, a file back to SAP um, which is going to clear those open items and this can be done on a schedule or at any point in time you could actually go 
run this interface and I'm actually going to run it right now and we're actually going to go back into SAP and see that those items have been cleared. So I'm drilling back into my account and I haven't refreshed the screen yet so we can see that there's still those hundreds of items but if you look close you can see all right, we have a receivable for this Allentown building for $12,000 and we've had all the payments come in. So that's an example of some transactions that should be cleared against each other. We already know from Blackline that they did match off and there are only a couple items left. So let's actually back off. I, I've, I've run the process. So if we back out and we drill back in, what we should see now is that we only have a few open items. So we have exactly four open items now in the account and we can see that many of those items that were in there are now cleared and we know what these items are because they're on our reconciliation. So we saw the uh, the two items, the two new items from December and then we saw the, the suggested match where there was two transactions that were 90 cent different and those are the only four items that are left in the account now and so Blackline and SAP are in sync. We didn't have to manually clear those items. Um, we didn't have to spend time trying to identify which items should be cleared and which items belong in our reconciliation. We were able to automate a lot of the process and we could do this more than once a month if we wanted to. We could keep our GL very clean throughout the month uh, and prevent a, a lot of manual work and allow accountants to be able to add more value. So some of the things that you would experience from implementing a solution like this definitely reduce the the amount of time spent manually matching transactions, uh, reduce the time spent manually clearing those items in SAP, and reduce reconciliation times. Um, this is also going to give you a lot of control over the process because you have systematic rules for clearing as opposed to you know, users just going in and, and clearing on what seems to be right. Um, you have clear ownership of, of the process and the ability to track it. Um, you have the ability to route open items directly to a reconciliation without a, a lot of human intervention or copying and pasting. Um, Blackline and SAP are in sync, so what's open and on a reconciliation in Blackline is open in SAP. Um, management visibility across the process. Uh, and then on the SAP side, this would allow you to uh, leverage open item management more um, and use it on more accounts, um, maximize your investment in SAP, and now that open item management becomes um, part of the process and becomes a, a value add um, functionality in SAP.